Good evening all, and welcome. Tonight, we're going to be hearing some horrifying tales about lovely neighbours, who turned out to be quite the opposite. So for now, it's time to get comfortable and let the darkness take control. Back in 2015, I was working as a live-in home health aide for a wealthy family. It was just me and my patient living in a very nice condo in a quiet neighborhood on a golf course. We were the youngest people who lived there. I was 27 at the time, and my patient was a 21 year old male with Asperger's, SPD and BPD, and substance abuse problems. He had recently gotten into some trouble and been legally declared incompetent. Jake was his name. He was a nice kid but had severe emotional issues and almost no social awareness, compounded by the refusal to take prescribed medication, which worked incredibly well when he took it, and drug abuse. He was taken advantage of a lot because of the crowd that he hung around with. Right before I moved in, six friends came to hang out with Jake one day and ended up staying for two weeks, draining Jake's bank account on various drugs and absolutely trashing the condo. Jake was lonely and never said no to people. He wanted them to like him. Honestly, I think Jake was 14 to 15 years old mentally. I think he turned to drugs to deal with depression and anxiety and also to fit in with the people around him. He's much better now. It was a sweet gig. I was paid very well, lived in a nice condo rent free, and basically just had to keep our house clean, keep food in the fridge and make sure he took his meds. When I moved in, my boss, Jake's mother, warned me about a girl who occasionally stayed with her father, who was our downstairs neighbor. She told me that the girl was named Amber, and she looked younger, but she was 37 years old, tall, blonde and very thin. She was right. She did look much younger, about 25 ish. She said Amber didn't have a car or a job, and she was an addict who liked to use Jake. Amber's father had custody of her two children, and she would come to visit the kids and stay for a few days a week. She said one day Amber asked to borrow Jake's car for an hour, and ended up running off with it for two weeks. Amber was also the one who introduced Jake to the six friends who trashed the condo. She was bad news and never allowed in the condo. She wanted me to call her immediately if Amber stopped by or Jake went anywhere with her. After the theft, she put a GPS on Jake's car and allegedly she could stop the engine. My boss made it clear that she didn't expect me to be a security guard just notify her of things that were going on. Leading up to this event, I had a few run ins with this Amber, where I had to politely tell her that she wasn't allowed to come into the apartment. Jake could not take her to the store or anywhere. And no, Jake couldn't go to a party at her boyfriend's house. Amber was always spaced out. Like she spoke really slow, seemed wide eyed and off. She explained to me that she had been hit by a car while riding a bike recently, and complained that she was the one who ended up going to jail. I was like, how? Apparently she takes a lot of Xanax and was under the influence. So I think that explains the spaced out part. She never sounded aggressive, but it was clear that she didn't like me, and would often say things like, Jake is his own person. He's a 21 year old man, he doesn't need permission. And whenever she spoke to Jake, when we saw her at the gym or the parking lot, she would be whispering to him, no doubt trying to manipulate him into giving her money or something. Anyway, on to the incident. Jake was out of state with his father, giving me a mini vacation. My best friend was staying over to spend a few days with me and we were drinking PBR and watching RuPaul's Drag Race. It's about 11pm, and we hear a light knock on the door. I go to investigate through the peephole and see it's Amber. I ignore her. She locks louder about 30 seconds later, 
and I watched her leave through the peephole and sit back down, telling my friend the situation. Five minutes go by and she's back. This time she's pounding on the door like a cop. I'm getting pissed because I'm off work and I don't want to deal with her crazy, especially when my friend is over. So I say nothing and go back to the couch. She starts knocking like a normal person and starts saying, Hello, Jake, I need help. I carry on ignoring her. Then I hear her try to open the door, but it's locked. And this enrages her or something. And she starts screaming and pounding on the door nonstop. I get up and look through the peephole again and she looks like a demon. Her pupils were huge, so I think she was on something. She looked crazed. Her hair was tangled and wild. She was sweaty and angry. Looking back, I'll never forget those wide pupils looking at me through an evil glare. I ask her through the door what she wants, and she said that she needs to speak with Jake right now, that he owes her money, and she needs to ride to her boyfriend's right now. I tell her Jake isn't home. She then asks me if I will take her, to which I say no. I've been drinking and then I'm going to bed. She let out some frustrated scream, punched the door and left. My friend and I went to bed shortly after and didn't hear from her again. The next morning, we're getting ready to leave to go have breakfast. I hear a knock, like policemen knocking at the door. You know the sound. I look through the peephole expecting to see Amber, but this time it's an actual cop. I open the door and can see my parking lot is full of police. There's a van marked crime scene unit and an ambulance. I honestly assumed Amber overdosed or something. The cop wanted to ask me if I heard anything strange last night. I tell him about my encounter with Amber and ask if she's okay. He tells me that she is in custody for the murder of her father. Does Jake own a crossbow and is missing one? Yes, and yes, it's been missing for weeks. He says I need to speak to some detectives at the station. So I don't know if she came to my door before or after it happened with a crossbow like she's Tyrion Lannister or something. But the detective told me that his theory was that she was a heroin addict and she was withdrawing and needed to get to her boyfriend's for some more dope. She tried to get Jake to drive her, and when that didn't work, she asked her father who refused. Then, this is what went down. They argued. Our neighbors heard that. She ended him with the stolen crossbow and stole his truck. She only got a mile away before she was signaled by two cops. She led the cops on a high-speed chase over the span of two counties before she finally lost control and crashed. The cops were only pulling her over on suspicion of drink driving. But when they went to speak to her, she told them that she was speeding because she needed to check on her dad. She thought that someone had ended him. They asked her why she thought that and she couldn't answer. They sent police for a welfare check and they found him before her sons did. So that was the time my crazy drug addicted neighbor ended her father's life with my patient's crossbow. Please, let's never meet again. For context, I am female. My parents got divorced when I was 10 and my brother was eight. They had bought a house in a fairly big plot of land and decided to split it. The house was demolished. And my mum was building a new house to live with me and my brother. We lived in a very small city that is known for its safety. Fast forward to when I was 15. And the house still wasn't ready. Me, my brother and my mum lived in an apartment really nearby to where they were building the house. So we would check in on it from time to time. It was an evening when me and my mum were getting back from the market and decided to check the house. As we were parking in front of the house, the car lights showed a man trying to jump the fence to get in. 
I was really freaked out. But my mum stepped out the car and shouted to the guy, asking what the hell he was trying to do. It was an old guy in his late 60s, really tall and skinny. He was starting to bald, having hair only on the sides of his head. He was giving really creepy vibes. He jumps out of the fence and looks scared. He wasn't expecting someone to show up because no one lived there yet. He said he lived in the apartment building next to the house and was trying to cut down a branch from a tree that was knocking on his window. So my mum said he was trespassing and if he wanted to do something in her house, he should have contacted her. She yelled at him to go away and not return. We went home and never really spoke about it anymore. A few months later, my family finally moved into that house. It was a cute home with lots of trees and space for my dogs to run free in. At the time we had three dogs, two small ones and a border collie that we rescued. Every day we could hear a teenager female voice yelling at the apartment building next to our house. We figured it was just some teenage drama because we could always hear her saying the same things every teenager says to their parents. I don't want to live here. You don't get me at all. And so we never really did anything about it. Some time passed and my best friend moved to an apartment in that building. She said she could hear them yelling to her father. Guess who the father was? The man that was trying to get into our yard. That freaked me out a little bit, but I didn't have any proof he was doing something to her. One evening I was eating some fruits in the front of my house with my dogs and I heard someone scream, like a man and woman were fighting. I looked around and figured out it was coming from the building next to my house. As I looked to the building I saw a woman falling from a balcony, but couldn't see if anyone had pushed her. So I called an ambulance and they were really fast in getting her and taking her to the hospital. At the same time the police came and took a man that I couldn't get a good look at to see if it was the same one that was trespassing. I don't know what happened that day and who the man was. My dad then started building his house next to my mum's. I spent a lot of time in my best friend's apartment that was just by the creeps apartment. As I said, my yard was full of trees and sometimes I could see animals there like lizards, snakes, foxes and possums. One day me and my friend were in her balcony and I could see a lizard walking on the wall that separated my house and the building. In the balcony next to hers, the creepy man showed up with a firearm trying to shoot the lizard. We began screaming at him, begging for him not to kill it. He looked as surprised as before. I guess he thought he was alone. He said nothing and went back to his apartment. I told my dad about it and he just said we shouldn't interact with that man. I was already 18 at this point and things started to calm down or so I thought. It was an afternoon around four and I was home alone. I went for a walk with my border collie. She's really sweet and I was used to riding my bike and she'd always follow me. So that's what I did. As we were coming home back to my house, just passing by the building, that man throws a very large rock at my dog. She was running, so the rock hit her leg. I cursed him, went back to my house, looking at my dog to see if she was hurt. I told my mum, and she said I should never walk alone. Sometime later, I found a really cute but skinny cat at my college. I was sitting down smoking and this cat jumped in my lap. I came back to watch a class with him in my lap and he slept through the whole thing. I brought him home. He was orange and fierce and he was a street cat. We let him go for walks in the street and everyone liked him. He was really friendly and asked for pets from everyone. People let him in their houses and frequently sent my mum pics of the cat on their yard or sofa. So we never thought he was bothering anyone by walking around. At this time we were forgetting about the violent nature from our neighbor. My family went on a trip to visit my grandma and my dad stayed to take care of our pets. He said one night he heard some footsteps around his house, 
but as he walked out the front door, he couldn't see anyone. He thought it was just the dogs messing around and went back to his house to go to sleep. When we came back, we realized one of the trees back in my mum's house was dying. It was a really big tree over 100 years old, one of the biggest in the yard and was really beautiful. As you can imagine, this was the tree the man was complaining about before the first time we met him. So my dad went to look at the tree and found out it had a lot of holes in it. He said it's a way to get poison inside the tree and kill it. He also said we shouldn't tell my mum because it was going to scare her and make her more upset because the trees were the main reason she bought that place. I never told her about it. Some time goes by and me and my brother moved out to another town to finish our studies. I wanted to take the cat with me, but my mum said it was going to be hard for him to adapt to a new living environment. He liked so much being able to walk around. So I agreed that he could stay with her. A few days later, she visited me and told me that my cat had passed away. I was broken. How did it happen? She found him with his neck broken in front of the apartment building next to our house, his head twisted, but my cat was still alive. But as she arrived in the vets, the cat passed. She said that she thinks it was the man that did that. We didn't have any proof. But you know the feeling when you just know? I cried so much. He was my first cat and so sweet. My mom still lives in that house. She has five cats now, but none of them go out. And the man is still her neighbor. I'm with her during quarantine. And I see him all the time, walking past our house, always looking up to see if someone's there. I later found out that the girl who fell from the balcony survived. She came back in a wheelchair, but I'm unsure if that was permanent or not. She took her things and went away. I don't know who pushed her. But my best friend that lived in the same building said the man was still living there. A few months after this, a lot of creepy things started to happen on our neighborhood. About turning him to the police. Well, when he threw a rock at my dog, I did report him to the police, but nothing happened. I didn't contact the authorities about the other stuff because I don't have any proof. Maybe we'll invest in cameras. I'm 28 years old. But when I was about five, my mum and I lived in this duplex that was off a main road and kind of in a wooded area. We lived on one side and on the other was a woman and her son. He was studying to be a teacher. My mother had me young, so she was about 25 and the guy was in his early 20s. He would often come over to talk to my mum. My mother said he would ask a lot of questions about me and ask my mother if it would be all right for him to take me for walks in the woods. My mother always declined. My mother worked in the operating room at the local hospital and was on call a lot. So most weekends I stayed at my grandma's house. One night while I was at my grandma's house, my mum was at home alone, sleeping. She awoke in the middle of the night and said she doesn't remember if she heard something or felt someone in the room, but she woke up. She could see feet wearing socks sticking out from the end of her bed. She grabbed her bedside lamp and was about to hit the intruder when our neighbor yelled her name and said his name. He couldn't explain why he was in her bed naked and only wearing socks. But he begged my mother to not tell his mother about it. My mother, of course, called the police. She ended up going to court and making a victim impact statement against this guy because she was terrified he'd become a teacher and be around children. She says she's pretty sure he was there for me that night. And I'm so happy I wasn't. We ended up moving immediately because she couldn't stay another night in that house. When I was about six years old, my mum officially ended her on and off relationship with my father and we moved into a small but cozy one room apartment. I had my own room while my mum would sleep on a bed couch as she preferred to fall asleep with the TV. We were on the third floor and the first door on that floor 
we only had one neighbour. When we first moved in, I was in school and my mum was unpacking at home. After she dropped me off, she met our neighbour who lived next door. She introduced herself as his new neighbour, but he looked very resentful for some reason, as if my mum did something bad. After the introduction, he asked, So you're the new neighbour? Which was weird because my mum had just introduced herself as such. But regardless of that weird question, she said yes, and that she lived here now with her daughter, me. My girlfriend was supposed to move in here, but then she couldn't because you got the place first, he said to my mum grumpily. My mum was confused but apologised for his inconvenience, and that was the first weird encounter with the neighbour. After we'd lived here for some months already, he suddenly became very friendly. Before, we would only meet him on the floor sometimes, but he rarely left his house anyway. So we basically never saw or interacted with him. Then suddenly, one day, my mum was coming home from work with me after picking me up from school. And he was standing at his door drinking coffee. Hello, Mary. I have made coffee. Would you like to have some and come inside? My mum politely declined. She looked a bit frightened. He was a very tall man, and I think the sudden change in his behaviour since the last conversation must have creeped her out a little bit. We went inside and I asked what that was all about. She told me she believed that he might have a mental illness, and I agreed that this could be plausible, so we left it at that. Some days went by and nothing happened with the neighbour. We wouldn't actually see him at all in the days that he wasn't communicating with us. Some nights later, I woke up from playing Hit Me Baby One More Time by Britney Spears very loudly, because I was around 6 or 7. I was thinking it must be the 4am-ish music videos on TV on some channel from my mum's living room, that I just left it on, since my mum didn't seem to hear it or complain and fell back asleep. The next day, I asked my mum about the music, and she said she had turned off the TV after she dozed off, and it wasn't her, and told me she didn't hear anything. So I just assumed I imagined it. Some days later, I awoke to the sound of music once again. This time I was sure I was awake and heard it. I went to the living room to wake my mum up and noticed that you couldn't hear it from the living room. I woke my mum to show her the noise and she clearly heard it too. She wandered around my room to see which direction the sound was coming from, until she put her ear up against the wall, facing the neighbours. After listening for a few minutes, she confirmed to me it was coming from this side, and that it was the neighbour, as we didn't have other neighbours. She called the police and complained to them about the music and that it woke me up, and she had a child that needed to go to school the next day and was losing sleep. The police arrived 30 minutes later, and we stood in front of our closed door to listen to the conversation between our neighbour and the police. They told him a neighbour complained, and that he needed to turn down the music as it was already way past midnight. He was very blunt and avoided any further talk with the police, just saying okay all the time. After we heard the police leave and his door close, we went to bed. Immediately the next day, he was standing in front of his door at my mum's, when she was coming from work home alone. He asked her something along the lines of, Did you call the police on me? My mum, a single mother living next to a tall man who gave off weird vibes, lied and denied the allegations. He asked her if she liked the music, and my mother told me, it left her speechless. She said she didn't like Britney Spears. My mum was always the Bon Jovi kind of woman, and this still amuses me to this day. And quickly left to go into her own apartment. As it was Friday that they had the encounter, she would stay in most of the weekend being safe from the weirdo. But I wasn't there, so I didn't know what creepy things she might have noticed on the weekend. On Sunday, I came back from my dad's in the later evening. After dinner, I would go to bed as I had school the next day. Again, I woke up at night because of the same Britney Spears album. This time, it was toxic. 
I woke up my mum again and she came into my room, banging against the wall, revealing in that moment by doing that, that it was her that had called the police the other day. We heard the music being turned down lower, but not turned off, and the neighbour screamed through the wall, Do you like that song, Mary? And then turning the music back up. My mum understandably creeped out, called the police again, but before they could arrive, he turned off the music and the police couldn't do anything, as he turned the music off about 20 minutes already before they arrived. I guess he heard my mum say that she was going to call the police again, and I didn't sleep well that night, and my mum didn't sleep at all. A few things happened since then that were rather unsettling. For example, we could sometimes hear him literally listening into our conversations. My mum's phone calls of when my mum had guests over, we could hear him moving rooms to the same direction as we did, and him walking against the wall and then stop walking, indicating he was listening. Really creepy stuff, but my mum had no solid proof to call the police against him. One day, we would walk our dog, a female golden retriever, and he would watch us from his window. When my mum noticed that for the first time, she looked out for it the next time and he was watching us from the window again. At this point, if not earlier, my mum had told my uncle about the neighbour, who would then show up once to knock on his door with the intention to tell him to leave us alone, but he didn't open the door to him. He was very clearly home, and we could see him move inside. My uncle screamed through his door. We hoped he would get scared off a bit by him, but he didn't. At that point, my mum didn't leave me alone anymore, not even in the apartment. I had to come here with her wherever she went. Once we were walking the dog again, and he happened to come down the stairs at the same time. He would stop and say, oh, she's a cute dog. But how did he know she was female? My mum became so frightened. She didn't even reply, but acted like we had forgotten something in the apartment, and we went back inside as we didn't want to be outside when he seemingly was as well. It was clear he was listening to everything we said through the walls to the point he even knew our dog was female. Some time went by, and we would just notice his usual creepy behavior of watching us from the window, listening through the walls, and the occasional Britney Spears music at night. Suddenly we were coming back from the grocery store, and there happened to be a piece of paper trapped on his door. We looked at it, and it was a phone number. Without saying anything to me, my mum just looked at me briefly, took the paper and we went inside our home. We looked at the paper, and noticed he wrote it on the back of a recent grocery receipt, where he apparently had bought tons of cheese and bread, which was very strange. She told me she was going to ring the number anonymously, and I should record it with my emergency cell phone. She started calling the number anonymously. I began recording, and the neighbor immediately picked up. Looking back, I guess he saw us taking the note through the peephole. He furiously started shouting into the phone, Mary, it's 4.56, you should have called. He kept only saying this on the phone. We could even hear it through the wall. He repeated this, then laid down the phone, walked around his room as we could hear him because his voice was becoming more and more distant, but kept saying the same thing. My mum called for one minute, then hung up. We were freaked out. I remember I was very scared and begged for my mum to stay somewhere else tonight. But my mum says, no, this ends today. And it did. Hours later in the evening, something crazy happened. We didn't do anything. All my mum did was call my dad to let him know what was going on, and he was on high alert to come over any time. We suddenly heard a knock on the door, not a neighborly knock, it was a police knock. My mum jumped up, obviously cautious, walking to the door, looking through the peephole, and it was the neighbor. Before my mum could react, he knocked again. Mary, what's wrong? You haven't walked the dog, open the door. My mum answered the door, asked him to go away, but he didn't. He kept talking through and knocking on the door. I got scared and asked my mum to call the police or my dad. 
The neighbor suddenly said, Don't worry, Veronica. Don't be scared. I got 100% more scared and so did my mum. She started screaming through the door to piss off and leave us alone. But he wouldn't. My mum, I don't know why, opened the door and told him loudly to leave us alone. Very seriously. I don't know what he said back really, but I don't really think it made much sense. As my mum was about to close the door on him again, he suddenly put his foot in between to try and force his way in. My mum pushed the door against his body and screamed for help while he still tried to get into the apartment. I freaked out and started crying. I grabbed the fishing net I had and hit the neighbor with the handle of the net. After what seemed like only two minutes, a neighbor from upstairs ran downstairs to our rescue, pulling the guy away from the door and holding him against the wall. My mum told me to go into the living room, but I stayed close so that I could see. Our upstairs neighbor was shouting at the creepy one to leave us alone. That we're a woman and child living there and he is a danger to us. The creep then quickly disappeared into his own apartment and the good neighbor came to check up on us, telling us the guy had always given him weird vibes. In fact, mentally ill. And this apartment was given to him by governmental support. We thanked him for his help and he informed us that he had called the police before and they would be coming shortly and he was waiting for the police to serve as witness. My mum called my dad for additional support who almost arrived with the police at the same time. The police then knocked on his door and after he asked who it was, the police told him someone had called them due to him harassing his neighbors. He opened and demanded to see their badges, which they showed and my mum and I could look inside his apartment and it seemed empty. He didn't have much furniture and it seemed like he just moved in with essential things missing like a fridge. The walls were dirty. He then said he didn't do anything, but the good neighbor told the police what happened. The creep then got asked for his ID. He said he didn't have any. The police didn't believe him and said if he couldn't provide ID, they would come back with a search warrant so they can help him find his ID. He came back a few minutes later with his ID. Then they quickly looked up his record and they confirmed that he was mentally ill, that it wasn't told to us, and that he had been stalking another person once before. Maybe his girlfriend who actually wanted our apartment, and that they can't make him move due to governmental protection, but they can talk to his mental health institute about his incident. And at the end of the talk, they really recommended my mum move as they know law enforcement can be slow in these cases, as they didn't want to risk either mine or my mum's well being. My dad was now coming around more often due to this for two months until we moved. We left the place to my cousin who moved in next. And my cousin who moved in, he met the neighbor who then asked him, where's Mary? And my cousin told him that he will never see her again and that he better not talk to him or his family ever again. I think that scared him off because shortly after he mysteriously moved from one day to another. And that was the end of that. So to the creepy neighbor who ruined Britney Spears for me, let's never meet again. This all started about a year ago. I'm a 23 year old female and I live on the second floor of an apartment complex and have lived there my entire life. The building is mostly comprised of families with young children and married couples. A lot of the families have lived here as long as my family has. So everyone knows each other pretty well. There is only one apartment unit that isn't occupied by a family, but rather by a pair of brothers who keep to themselves. One day, one of their sons who's around my age appeared out of the blue. He was strange off the bat. He would always wear a sweatshirt with the hood up and would run through the apartment complex to get to his own apartment. I'm not sure what his face looked like because he always had the hood over his face. He lived on the first floor on the backside of the complex and would often get to his place by jumping through the window. He basically did everything in his power to avoid any interaction. I didn't mind him because I never saw him due to my busy schedule. However, one day 
he started sitting on the top staircase that leads to my apartment. This was strange because his apartment unit was on the other side of the complex, and on the first floor. I brushed it off at first, but it started happening every day. When I would come home from school, he was there. When my boyfriend at the time would drop me off at night, typically around 1030 to 11, he would be there. Sometimes when I would leave and come home back hours later, he would still be in the exact same spot as if he hadn't moved for over five hours while I was gone. At this point, I told my parents and my boyfriend about it, and they became very vigilant. My boyfriend would park his car and walk me to the door every time he dropped me off. Once he saw my boyfriend, he stopped sitting on the staircase, and I thought it was over. But it wasn't. He started waiting for me at my bus stop. The bus I take home from school stops right across the street from my home, so it's a short walk. One day when I was getting off, I saw him waiting at the bus stop. Once he saw me get off, he followed me into the complex and sat on the staircase. He also started following me when I would walk my dog. At this point, my parents were upset. My mum started letting the neighbours know he was following me. And my neighbours started making sure he wasn't bothering me, or if I was alone, they would start a conversation with me until I got to my door. One day, I got a friend request on Facebook from this guy. Mind you, I'd never spoken a word to him. How did he know my name, let alone find my Facebook? My mum tried talking to his father, but they never answered the door when my mum knocked on the door. So I'm thinking, it can't possibly get any worse, right? He seemed harmless, so I wasn't too worried. But I was wrong. One day when I returned from my boyfriend's house, my mum told me she had something to tell me. But she didn't want me to get upset. She proceeded to tell me that when she was walking towards the kitchen to get a glass of water, she saw something in the tree move. Our kitchen has a huge window that takes up most of the wall. In front of the wall, there's a huge tree. If someone were to climb the tree, you could see into our apartment. Well, guess what? When my mum took a closer look, she realised my neighbour was sitting in that tree, looking straight into it. My mum called my dad over, and when my neighbour saw my dad, he jumped off the tree. At that moment, I felt my peace stolen from me. We filed a police report, but when the police went looking for him, he was gone. It turns out there were snack wrappers, and a blanket hidden in between the leaves of the trees. The police think that wasn't the first time he was up on Jay Tree. I couldn't help but wonder how many times he saw me walking around and I had no idea. It's been about six months, and I haven't seen him since. His father still lives in the complex, but there's no sight of him. The police haven't been able to find him, so I have no idea what happened to him. But I do hope we never meet again. I was in college when I had my first solo apartment. This guy across the hall would come over or invite me over, and we'd hang out a few times. However, I would not call him a friend. One night he asks me to loan him money. In addition to not wanting to loan him money, I don't really have any. So he proceeds to ask for a ride to see his girlfriend because she has some money for him. And I agree. We arrive at her apartment and a small party is going on. When we walk into the party, everyone immediately shuts up and stares at us. He runs off to find his girlfriend, who I find out is his ex-girlfriend. It is awkward because I'm kind of this guy's friend by association, and I'm getting a lot of angry stares. He gets into an argument with her, and we are basically thrown out. He then asks if I can take him to another part of town. He owes another guy some money, and needs to go talk to him. We proceed to an unfamiliar part of town, and he instructs me to park in a fairly isolated spot. He explains that he doesn't want the other guy to see my car because he might take it. He owes this guy money for gambling, as well as other things, and he is always behind on payments. I left him and spent the rest of the night in that apartment. 
avoiding him. I'm a dog walker with Rover, and that means I go to strangers' homes every day multiple times a day. As I walked up to this apartment that was facing the street, I saw a man peeking his head out from behind his door in apartment one. We locked eyes, and he slowly retreated into his apartment. I got a weird feeling from him, but I had one more walk after this, so I brushed it off and headed to apartment three. Apartment three is around the side of the building in a small alleyway that barely passes as a driveway for cars. There is a high privacy fence that runs along the alley. There's a stairwell that blocks the view to apartment two and three. The apartment doors are side by side and set back in a way that makes them situated under the stairs. This client has two dogs, and I took one out at a time since her male dog is very aggressive. As I was returning with the female dog, Carly, I glimpsed the top of someone's head behind the stair. I got a weird feeling again, so I stopped. Carly nuzzed my leg and then stepped in front of me on high alert. A head peeked out from the stairs and I knew it was the man. I saw him see me and he hurried behind the stairs out of sight. I was pressed for time and knew that I needed to get the other dog to take him out. I approached the alleyway slowly. I pulled out my phone and was ready to dial someone for help. I had this feeling I should not turn in towards the client's door. So I walked a little past and turned to face Carly as if I was waiting for her. I could tell Carly was on edge. I followed her gaze and saw that the man was standing in front of apartment two with a beer bottle in his hand. He wasn't holding it like he was going to drink from it. He was holding it around the neck. He sees me and immediately presses himself back under the stairs. I gave him a questioning look, and he responds with a smile and gestures to apartment three's door. I noped the hell out of there and decided to go behind the building and around the other side. As Carly and I rounded the building, back to the front, I made sure to hide so that if someone was in the alley, they wouldn't see me. I wanted to see where that guy went. After a few minutes, I see the man slowly move away from the apartments and down the alley to where I had gone, beer bottle at the ready like a bat. I waited for him to round the corner and Carly and I beelined it for the door. Thankfully, the rest of the walk went fine. Honestly, though, it's probably because when I brought out the male dog, he decided to back off. This dog came out of the apartment barking aggressively on high alert. If I were this guy, I would have backed off too. Hey guys, it's Mort here and thank you so much for listening. I want to apologize about all these continued days off. Honestly, I've been so anxious. Just everything is constantly building up and I feel like I needed a break. So I took a break and all the little days off if I've been feeling overwhelmed, I've just literally had to stop. Life can get really challenging sometimes. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm hoping things get better. I really enjoyed making this video though. I do like making videos, but I don't know. Sometimes you just get so overwhelmed and you just really can't do anything. <laughs> so I am really sorry for that. And I know many of you are gonna be super supportive in the comments section as you always are, so thank you. I have just never really dealt with this much anxiety before, and I need to find a, an outlet for it so that I can feel better and move on. But it's challenging to say the least, because I've, I feel like if I'm not doing anything, I feel like I'm lazy or that I'm not achieving something. So then I do lots of things, but then when they get out of hand, I start getting anxiety and that leads to other issues. <laughs> I don't really know. It's like a double edged sword. I can't win with myself. Anyway, I hope you liked the video. If you did, well, you know what to do. But I'm going to end it here for now. As always, thank you to my lovely patrons whose names are on screen for your continued support. It really is invaluable. Thanks, guys. Stay awesome. And I'll see you in the next one.